Hello. Thank you for joining us today for Brings Platform Tour. We have here Arya Atsul, our VP Sales, who's going to give us a quick intro to the Bring Platform. And then we will move into our demo portion with Hadar Barrier, our product manager. She will be walking through the platform and its features. Um, and then at which point we will move over to a Q&A session. And so now we will begin and start with Arya. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ari Alchil, and I'm the VP Sales at Bring. I'm just going to start off with going through a little bit about the company, um, a little bit about our history, our customers, and to give you a sense of the type of um, solutions that we're going to provide. So. Bring, um, Bring is a customer-centric logistics platform. Um, um, what we mean by that is customer expectations have really shifted over the last couple of years in the sense of, what we expected and what customers expect when they're receiving deliveries or services have changed. Um, you know, back a couple of years ago, if we would have ordered something online and it would have showed up at our house a couple of weeks later, we would have thought it was the greatest um, thing ever. And today, if it doesn't come immediately with some type of amazing user experience, um, it's really a differentiator for companies in order to provide additional value to their customers. Um, so what we do is provide a customer-centric logistics platform for enterprises, helping them modernize and give transparency over all of the logistics um, infrastructure. Uh, the system is really flexible in the way it enables us to work cross vertical um, in retail and grocery um, with restaurants. Uh, really, we have a global footprint across the globe with customers um, in all different points, uh, corners of the earth. Um, and our offices are based in New York, Chicago, and in Tel Aviv. To give a little bit about the platform architecture, um, the idea behind the Brink system is that we understand that there are a lot of existing infrastructure and existing um, existing infrastructure inside of companies' logistics, and we want to be able to provide the, the additional components to enable them to add add functionality and to um, give transparency to their customers. So we built it in a way to enable it to be extremely scalable, being able to to take high levels of volume. At the same time, being able to be open um, with APIs, SDKs, and webhooks to be able to integrate with existing platforms that are in place. Uh, the system obviously comes along with the highest level of security. And the idea of being future-proof and modular to enable customers to add the different components that they choose to add inside of their system. So the system isn't like a one system that you need to integrate and to implement and to replace existing technology. We're able to add on different features and functionalities inside your existing um, setups in order to provide the different components in which you're reaching, um, in which you would like to add. And we're going to go over a couple of those uh, features as well um, with Hadar's presentation. You know, when we're when we're looking at what we're looking to achieve um, inside of delivery today, obviously we want to kind of give the optimal experience to the customer. Um, being able to provide them a great user experience, being able to communicate them and engage them on the delivery. Um, being able to give you know the real time feedback and all those different aspects of um, of the customer of the customer experience on delivery. At the same time, we give the tools to the companies to be able to 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 offer the operational aspects, to be able to streamline their operations, give real time transparencies, be able to do optimization, help companies save money, um, and what we call elastic logistics, basically running your own fleet and external fleet and be able to move seamlessly in between those two variables. So looking at adding, number one, how we operate our companies in terms of the operational side of moving things through, um, you know, the, it would be the staging areas, the warehouse areas, getting them um, ready to go out to delivery, all the way through to the customer side to be able to provide a great experience to the customer. Um, so those are the kind of high level overview about what we're looking to achieve um, at Bring. And we're gonna pass over to Adar, who's gonna deep dive into a little bit more of all the different features um, of the system. So thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the Q&A. Thanks, Arye. Um, now we'll be moving to Adar and the demo portion of our webinar. Thanks, Arya. 
Um, so hi, my name is Hadar and I'm a product manager here um, at Bring. And what I am planning to do for the next few minutes um, is really share a few features um, of the Bring platform that um, optimize and, and improve um, the delivery process all the way through uh, from planning through um, staging process for deliveries, the driver experience and the customer experience at the end. So all through uh, the delivery process. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with an actual live demonstration of the Bring platform and how we plan for um, for the next day of deliveries. You'll see how um, pretty simple and, and, and friendly it is to do that. And then we'll dive into different features that, um, that are available on the Bring platform. So just before we get started with that demonstration, I do want to um, give a few words about the Bring ecosystem. So as Arya mentioned before, Bring is a customer centric uh, platform and we have three player, three main players we are talking about when we talk about the Bring um, experience. So on the um, left hand side, you can see the customer. Um, the customer's experience is um, pretty much the way they choose it to be. So they, it can be um, web-based, it can be mobile-based, um, it can be in your application. Um, on the right-hand side, we see the driver. Uh, the driver is using a mobile app for the deliveries. And then in the center, we see um, the management dashboard. And that's, um, and that's the one we will look at right now when we, um, when we do a demo of... Uh, of planning the next day. Planning is, will be done on the, on the dashboard. So I'm just quickly switching to um, an actual dashboard and we will see that now. Um, so at this point you should see a live, um, a live environment um, that I created here uh, for this demo. It's a relatively small scale demo. So I only have 36 uh, deliveries that I need to plan for tomorrow, as you can see right here. Um, and I only have one warehouse. I only have a few drivers. That's for the sake of example. Um, and just a quick note, first of all, of course, the orders need to be created. And as Arya mentioned before, they can be created using an R API integration, or um, you can also use a CSV file. So Bring is really open to, to different um, methods of, of connecting to, to other platforms that you're probably using. Um, so when I try to plan my next day, I really need to look at, at what I have in front of me. So I have those 36 um, deliveries that need to be done. Each one of them has, um, has a time window, as you can see right here um, on the right hand side. It has a time window in which it has to be delivered. Some of them have to be delivered somewhere between six and nine. Some have to be delivered between 10 and one. If you think about a um, a scenario, for example, um, if I order a delivery from my supermarket, I don't want it to be delivered anytime tomorrow. I want to be able to choose a time when I'm there to, you know, unpack the boxes and put the groceries in the fridge. Um, and that's why we use those time windows here. And, and it's very important that the, opti the route optimization that we're going to create and dividing those orders between drivers really takes that into account. Um, so I can also tell you that um, on this, in this company, I have two types of drivers because what I'm going to do now is optimize those deliveries between them. I have drivers that drive a van. I have drivers that drive a truck. Um, and the volume that each of them can take um, is different. Um, so I wouldn't want to assign that many orders to a van as I would to, um, to a truck. Um, so we'll just go through this optimization process. Um, it's as easy as just clicking this button. Um, and I need, I'm asked to specify how many, um, how many employees I have working tomorrow. So I have those um, three. I have those three available van drivers tomorrow and I have also three available truck drivers tomorrow. Um, now what we'll see with this optimization is that even though I have, I mean, that's the fleet that I have, but obviously I only have 36 orders. I might not need all of them. And Bring will actually recommend what is the best number and best combination of those drivers to carry out those deliveries in time um, and, and in an efficient way. Um, once I selected my drivers, I click, um, I go on, and um, here I can set, I can select what time, what time period I want to optimize for. Am I optimizing for, um, for today, for tomorrow, for the next shift, for a specific date in the future? So I can actually select um, which dates I want to optimize for. But for this example, I'm just going to optimize for next shift, which is tomorrow morning's shift. And at this point, um, it might take a couple seconds, maybe even a minute, but um, the optimization is really now calculating um, 
what are the best routes to get each of my orders delivered on time to the customer. And the results that I'm getting here in this example is that I need two trucks and one van. Um, again, I made my trucks very, very um, small in volume for this example so we can see multiple routes. At, from this point, um, as a dispatcher, so as, as a dispatcher making the decisions and planning the day tomorrow, the next thing I wanna see is I want to preview what, what my driver's day is going to look like tomorrow. Um, so I get this nice map over here and I can really show each of my drivers um, on a, their route on a map so I can see it right here. Um, so I'm just gonna add all my routes and from now I can also make some, um, some adjustments to the results that um, the ring gave me. So I can say, you know what, um, this is a great route or I can zoom in here and say pink route up here. Um, I actually want them to deliver um, three before two. So stop number three before stop number two. Um, it's as easy as just switching the order between them on the timeline itself. So you can see um, me moving those orders right here and the number is changing. So now I get a new, a new route. I can also um, make a different decision and say, even though this is the recommended route, I would rather um, have a different driver take this one order over here. So I would rather um, this blue driver to take order number one and I can move that order between the drivers. Um, so one interesting thing we can see here and, and really kind of teaches us on, on on the different, I mean, and I'm sure all of you are very familiar with um, with those decisions that need to be made uh, when, when planning a route. But as we said before, we have those um, orders that need to be delivered in different windows. So you might ask me here, 14 and one, why are they not delivered by the same driver? And the answer is right here on the timeline. So order or, or 13 um, and, and one. And the reason is that one blue, one, two, and on blue have to be delivered in the morning window, while 13, 14 green have to be delivered in the afternoon. So I'm actually employing each of my drivers to the highest efficiency that I can, sending the green driver to go east and come back in the afternoon and sending my um, blue driver to go southwest from, from the beginning um, and really um, getting everything exactly when it needs to be delivered. Once I'm satisfied with all the changes that I've made to the optimization, I can apply those changes and start assigning the orders to drivers. And this will conclude our planning phase. Um, so I'm just going to select two drivers so that we can um, see the orders on, on the screen. Um, all the entire process I just did was for one warehouse. Um, in any case of, of any central management that does this process for multiple warehouse. Again, it will be just displayed on this one screen, um, very easy for the dispatchers to work through. I'll switch back to the presentation now so you can see the, the drivers being assigned here. All right, at that planning phase, and from here we'll move to the, to the driver and, and um, operator experience in the warehouse, but at that planning phase, you can also share this information with the customer. So we were talking about how, um, how today we want to know a little more about our delivery and we have the technology and the capability to, to give that information. So for example, one of my customers, Eric over here, um, when we optimized the route for, for all of our drivers, we figured that um, Eric's delivery is going to be delivered at a specific hour. So we can actually give Eric um, or any customer a very um, small window for the delivery. So I remind you my um, supermarket example from earlier. I asked my supermarket to deliver tomorrow between six and nine, but after you use Bring to optimize the route and find the, the most efficient sequence of deliveries, you can actually tell each of your customers, it's not going to arrive, the delivery is not going to arrive between six and nine, but between 6.55 and 7.55, you can get um, to much more granular um, information and, and improve the experience for your customers that now don't need to sit and wait for three hours, but just for one. After the planning is done um, in, in the, by the dispatcher, sorry, uh, we're moving into the warehouse. In the warehouse, 
now you're facing um, a pile of, of boxes that need to be staged for the drivers for um, the fastest pickup. And here in the warehouse, we, um, we are able to connect with um, peripheral devices, such as a barcode scanner and a printer for labels, and really help the operators in the warehouse to stage all the, um, all the parcels for quick pickup by the drivers. Every time you use the Bring Dispatcher app for that, and every time um, the operator scans a specific barcode, it will show them very clearly on the screen um, which, num which uh, driver this order is assigned to and also um, what is the sequence of this order in the entire delivery, uh, in the entire delivery day or shift. Um, this makes the driver's experience now much, much quicker because each driver just arrives and picks up from the warehouse and all of that is done with the Bring Dispatcher app. At this point, um, the driver is arriving to, um, to pick up the orders from the warehouse. Um, so a few words about the driver's experience. Uh, the driver gets a native app, and the app is available on um, iOS and Android, and it will basically walk the driver through everything um, he or she needs to do throughout the shift and also give them some, um, some additional capabilities to communicate with the office and the customer. And we'll see those um, right just next. Um, so when a driver starts their shift, they, um, they start with this um, screen on the left side of, the, of my uh, presentation, showing them that they need to arrive and pick up uh, multiple orders from, um, from the warehouse. They then need to just go scan the barcodes and every order that is collected uh, will be marked as such until they collect um, all of the orders successfully. Also, Bring will tell them, um, since we assume each route is not necessarily just 10 stops, but it can go up to 90 and, and, and 100 stops, we want to help the driver to load the truck. So we will tell them you know, where a specific parcel is in the whole um, sequence of deliveries for the day. So as we said, the, um, the app leads the driver through, through the day. And this is a good place to stop and say that um, the example that I'm giving today is, uh, is very much, um, is very specific to, uh, to deliveries. So I'm, I'm kind of mocking a, a, a retail store or a supermarket or um, any delivery service. However, we also support the case where um, Drivers are both delivering parcels or, or um, orders to customers and collecting from them. So um, if I'm a retailer, I might deliver and also collect some returns from my customers. Um, the driver doesn't need to think too much about that because the app is going to walk them through the entire process. So as you can see here, all of my orders are marked in this green little banner or, or tag here that says deliver. If I had to pick anything up, it would stand out. It would be in a different color. It would say pick up and it will walk me through what I need to do uh, when I get to that customer. In addition to that, we said, so on the one hand, the Bring app walks the driver through what they need to do. In addition to that, it will also allow them to, um, to perform different actions that they need that are um, vital to their delivery, to their smooth delivery experience. Uh, one of those things would be calling the customer, for example, and that can be done with just one click from the app. Same goes for navigating to the um, address. Once everything is right there on their phone, it connects automatically to any um, navigation app that they use, and they don't need to copy the address, um, risking making a mistake in, in copying it from a piece of paper or a label on the box to, um, to their navigation app. Now we can talk a little bit about the customer experience and we will um, conclude with that. We allow the, the, the customer, sorry, um, to be part of the experience and it is um, our client's decision to, uh, or the merchant's decision to, to what extent. So we highly recommend allowing customers to track the delivery uh, when it's on the way. And that's what we're seeing here. As soon as the custom, as soon as the driver, sorry, um, is on the way to that specific customer, um, in addition to the notification that we saw that we saw before that was sent during planning, now when that customer is heading towards my uh, my house to deliver to me, I get an, a text message saying they have a driver heading my way, and I can track that driver in real time. So we showed how the driver can communicate with the customer, and that communication goes both ways. As a customer, I can communicate with the driver, I can let them know that I'm running late, um, and really making this um, experience 
first of all, um, nicer and, and, and more and, and providing more visibility to the customer, but also the, um, the point of delivery becomes much smoother when I know someone is arriving in 14 minutes and also the driver knows to contact me if they don't find you know, the right entrance or the right parking spot. When, uh, when we get to that point of delivery, we might ask our drivers to perform some kind of proof of delivery. So we might need them to um, scan the barcode to prove that the specific parcel was given to that right customer, or we might ask them for, uh, for a signature, you know, confirming the, um, that the customer really collected that, um, that package from the driver. Um, and again, any company can decide what those rules are and those rules can change from, um, from delivery to delivery because some deliveries um, require more uh, strict proof of delivery while others are, are less strict. And here again, the driver doesn't need to remember the rules because the app will, prom will prompt the driver to perform that action that they are required for that specific delivery. And finally, once the delivery experience is um, completed for, uh, for the customer, the driver leaves and completes the delivery and the customer can, can see, can rate the service um, and, and provide some feedback to, um, to the driver and to the company. So just kind of to wrap up and we were seeing the entire, um, the entire delivery process from, uh, from planning all the way through um, customer experience and, and rating. And there are a lot of things that, um, that Brink can add to that experience that we will not talk too much about. So we mentioned um, collecting uh, returned orders from customers. Um, another thing that, um, that Brink can help you manage is cancellation and, um, or, or missed deliveries and additional attempts. One of the um, most, imp most important um, pieces of uh, deliveries is that if a customer is not at home, they might need to, I mean, the company might need to try again on a different day. However, if the customer was um, present to receive the delivery and refused to accept it, then in that case, you might not want to try again because trying again is not, is not um, going to help here and this needs to be returned. Um, to sender. You can set all those rules in Bring so that everything happens automatically from that point on. The, all, the, all the driver needs to do when they meet the customer, if they were not able to deliver, um, if they were not able to deliver the, the parcel or the order, they just need to select a very clear reason why. And from there on, everything will be um, done automatically for you. So with that, we... Um, I will conclude my part and uh, pass back to Sasha. Thank you, Adar. Um, now we will move into our Q&A session. We have a couple questions to start. Um, Adar, maybe you can expand a bit on the implementation process for the Brink solution in terms of timeline and resources. Yes, gladly. Um, so the implementation is, is um, relatively simple. Um, and what we usually, um, what we usually recommend is um, is starting with um, with some level of integration. So resources that will be required are um, definitely some um, some development. Um, but again, uh, this can be started within days. So we've had uh, we've had clients that um, implemented the entire solution and rolled out within a few days. Um, it's very much it's very much up to um, you to to decide, we will need developers um, to develop the integration. And other than that, training um, dispatchers and, and drivers. Okay, thank you. Um, we also encourage you to um, leave your questions in the uh, Q&A section, if you have any questions. We have an additional question. Um, can you, Arie, maybe you take this one. Um, could you give us a couple of examples of how companies are using the Brink solution in different scenarios? Sure. Um, I'll give you an example of, of the Panera Bread um, in the United States that's using our technology to manage all of their delivery um, from the restaurants to, to um, consumers' homes. Uh, it was a really interesting story in the fact that they started off in the beginning not offering delivery, testing with a bunch of delivery, and I would say there's concerns about how it may cannibalize existing business or, um, you know, 
customers won't come in and order um, and sit down. They would rather, you know, get it at home. And really what they found is, is in, um, in, you know, a really impressive increase in the business and the volume that they went through. Uh, the technology for them really helps analyze all aspects of the operation, um, really helping them to analyze the, the kitchen when the orders have to get out all the way to where the drivers are and through all the aspects of the delivery as well. So you really have managing the whole, you know, with customer experience, of course, but managing the whole life cycle of a customer um, of, you know, from the ordering process all the way to the home delivery, being able to manage all those different aspects. Um, to give it just a very different one would be the Coca-Cola company in which we're helping them solve all their out of stock and resupply across the globe. So being able them to uh, provide an application for a store owner to order, um, you know, whatever goods they're out of, you know, a couple crates of Coke or Diet Coke, and to be able to provide that to all the whole, um, all the wholesalers and resellers that are in the area to enable them to quickly resupply the smaller store. Uh, the problem here was that stores could stay um, many days without stock waiting for their regular resupply in the sense where they would go out and um, not be able to um, not be able to uh, fill fill the inventory in the time that they were needed. So really, stores getting the goods quicker, uh, the customer um, is able to, um, you know, Coke is able to provide better goods and the wholesalers and resellers are able to provide a service and digitalize the whole restocking process as well. So those are a couple examples ranging from, you know, B2C examples uh, to B2B examples as well. Thank you, Ari. Um, we're running a little bit short on time, but we have a couple more questions we hope to answer here. Um, Maybe Arya can expand a little bit on uh, use case incorporating of a B two B use case of uh, store with supplies. Sure. Yeah, that would you know in terms of the the resupplying of stores, that would be, you know, the in terms of you know re resupplying um, resupplying goods into stores and enabling the connection of the store owners with the wholesalers and resellers in the area using the customer application, um, enabling them to order basically on demand um, and to be able to get the goods quickly into the stores. And really there it's about leveraging existing resources that are already placed in the area and being able to, being able to utilize the existing um, sub, you know the existing vehicles existing warehouses and to be able to move goods quickly um, and hopefully you know cost cost effectively as well um, thanks Ari. Um, we have time for one more question um, Hadar can take this one um, do you have any plans to include real-time data, such as traffic or weather in your routing algorithms? Thank you. Um, so yes, our um, routing algorithm is um, based on um, maps that are updating um, very frequently and we take into consideration um, traffic data uh, when you when you optimize uh, when you optimize a route, you optimize for a certain time of the day, and we know from from history of um, you know of different um, routing um, that was done before, we know to say whether um, whether this is a more condensed traffic area or time, um, and and take that into consideration. Absolutely. Thanks, Hadar. Um, if anyone has additional questions, feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to discuss with you any specific questions. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you got something valuable from this, and we hope to see you on our next webinar.